All right, everybody, welcome to the Scrabble Go Community Tournament Finals, our first community tournament in 2021. Um, first things first, we do apologize for the delay getting set up. Um, I will take responsibility for that here, but I think we are now primed for a great broadcast on our end. Um, it's going to be a best of three finals in this community tournament, and we are really excited to bring you the action. I'll be providing the commentary and sort of acting as your host. And of course, our matchup today is between Lindsay Shin and Colin Halliday, our two finalists. Congratulations to both Lindsay and Colin for making it this far. Um, very, very difficult field of a whole host of very strong players that these two had to get through to make it to the finals. Um, fans of uh, Scrabble broadcasts may recognize the name Lindsay Shin, or at least the name Shin, if you watched the NASPA Tournament of Champions, you may have seen Lindsay's husband, Austin, compete. Um, a Scrabble family through and through. Um, Lindsay uh, is just a, a staple in the Scrabble community, a really, really strong player. And I might add um, also the a, a new mom of an eight-week-old son. And here she is um, competing and playing in this final. Um, so kudos to Lindsay for uh, clearly multitasking on a level that few of us are capable of doing. Um, Lindsay says that her favorite thing about Scrabble Go are all the different modes that you can play even beyond the classic mode game, which she is so good at, um, enjoying the speed of the arena games and those 20 point tiles in the adventure mode, which I have to admit, I enjoy that as well. Um, and yeah, Lindsay is just, uh, somebody that if you are a Scrabble player, um, you will enjoy having the privilege to, to meet Lindsay and uh, her opponent today, Colin Halliday, who has been playing Scrabble for over 35 years himself. And just as with Lindsay, Scrabble is a family affair for Colin. He plays Scrabble mainly with his daughters, the youngest of whom is 17. And uh, he actually plays on a physical board, too. So as much as we love Scrabble Go and all things digital, it, it is nice uh, to play on a physical board now and then as well. And uh, Colin reports that his favorite thing about Scrabble Go is meeting new people and the amount of people that you can play with on the app. Um, he's met some really amazing people uh, playing on Scrabble Go, including, as he reports, a jazz singer um, who now lives in Kansas and, uh, of course, uh, Colin li uh, hailing from Winnipeg in Canada. So um, I neglected to mention that Lindsay from New Orleans. So these two players about as far apart as you can be and still both be in North America. So that's uh, those are our finalists. And just a quick look at how our players got to this point. Um, so you see Lindsay and Colin, the finalists, and many, many strong players that they had to get through. If you see your name on this list, congratulations. You almost made it to that finals, and you did amazingly well to make it into uh, the final group of eight. And uh, what are the players playing for? Let's take a quick look. You can see the prizes. The champion, uh, the winner of this match that you're about to see, will receive the tile that you see on your screen right there. This beautiful Scrabble Go Tournament Champion tile. Look at that. Man, I'm pretty envious just looking at how sweet that tile is. Also, a three-month Scrabble Club subscription, a 1,000 gems, and five tickets to enter the arena. The runner-up still gets some nice prizes for having made it this far. A tile of their choice, two months of Scrabble Club, 700 gems, and five tickets as well. The semifinalists that you saw on the previous screen are also um, coming out with some nice prizes as well. So, all right, we've met our players. We know what the stakes are, and I think we should be ready to play. So, without further ado, let's cut to the game screen. I think the players are ready. And, uh, Lindsay, take it away. I'm going to mute myself on our call here. And uh, we're going to start Lindsay's clock now. 
Okay, so welcome to everybody watching along on Facebook after my intro here. Um, as Lindsay is dealing with some duplicated tiles, you see she's got two A's, she's got two N's. And whenever you have those duplicate tiles, the first thing on your mind should be to use them up as best you can. So she plays Adorn, a solid opening, leaving A-N. And wow, a tail of two racks here for Colin. Not nearly as uh, appealing of a rack for him here. You can see that um, he has all the wrong duplicates. So both players um, with similar problems, but Colin's rack is really um, much worse with those two U's and two O's. So... Um, for me, this rack is, as soon as you see a rack with tiles this week, you have to think to yourself, man, is it really even worth putting a word on the board here? Or should I simply exchange tiles and see um, if I can draw something better? The saving grace for Colin is he does have that S on his rack. So... Um, if he were to exchange some of his letters, he could keep that S and try to get a play with Adorns at some point, but it looks like he may be opting to play Goo and just grabbing a few points here. Um, that's a reasonable idea. Certainly, it never feels good to exchange on your first move, and I definitely um, relate to that as he moves his tiles around. But uh, this looks like a situation to me where there's almost no move to put on the board that um, seems like it's worth the terrible tiles that he'll have to keep for next turn. So let's see what he opts to do. This is a tricky situation. You definitely, as a Scrabble player, it never feels good to start off an important game with a rack like this that's so poor. Um, suggestion, I'm, I'm looking um, in the Facebook chat. I'm hoping to interact with you guys today. Uh, suggestion of Gyro, G-U-I-R-O, or Exchange. That's probably the only play that makes sense to place on the board here. So, um, yeah, otherwise, those two U's together, we all feel, the, we all sort of viscerally feel that the U is not such a great vowel, except when there's a Q to pair with it. Um, and one U is bad enough, two is really bad news. So I have to try to avoid those situations as best as possible. So Colin's having a good think here, and it makes total sense because this is an annoying rack with, not too much to recommend it, but um, we'll see. He's um, So I think it's worth noting that Lindsay definitely uh, has experience using the clock, whereas Colin's experience level mostly derives from Scrabble Go, where there is no clock most of the time. So um, we'll see if that manifests itself as it is definitely a, um, a learning curve to play Scrabble with a timer in this way. So um, it looks like he's considering just playing off one of his O's and one of his U's, which would make some sense because those are the letters that he has duplicated on his rack. Um, hey, everybody in the chat. I'm just seeing hi to Natalie, to Jeremy, Ross, Denise, and everybody else. Thank you so much for watching. We are just getting underway with our first game here in the Scrabble Go uh, Community Finals. And ooh, interesting, Colin ends up playing us there. So he uses that S, he correctly recognizes that getting rid of that U is important, but he shed also that really valuable S while he's at it. So we'll see if he comes to, to regret that. Um, all right, it's back over to Lindsay. She is going to place Maying on the board. Will she think to place an S at the end? She does. Very impressive. A very, very nice bingo for Lindsay on her turn there of Maying's, making the Greek letter N-U and pluralizing that with news there. Really nice play. That's a play that I have to say, as we go back over to Colin, the play of Mayings is a play that um, 
I think would be kind of tricky to recall the validity of that word over a board. But thanks to Scrabble Go, you can place it on the board and you can say, wow, um, that is a word, right? You can test, you can play around with it a little bit and place some words on the board. Um, as we see a really nice idea by Colin of playing boo and onus, that O hook um, to N-U-S. That's a great idea. If he goes with this play, it's going to score 30 points, which is a really nice score here. Um, but notice, though, that this S, and actually I have the ability to um, sort of draw and show you guys what I'm thinking, um, that this S is pretty wide open in this part of the board. So, oh, hold on a second. Let me remove this. And hopefully the, yeah, that's a little bit better. Um, so the open S in that side of the board is definitely scary, but a really nice play by Colin. Ooh, hold on. I didn't do the timer for him. Um, that's okay. He's still getting used to the timer, so that's all right. Um, we'll do some untimed turns maybe for Lindsay at some point to get that timer back on track. Okay, so it is back over to Lindsay now. She has struck first with her bingo of Mayings, and she has an S open to play with. However, she's got that Q on her rack as well. So it looks like she's going to play doters to the triple lane, which makes a lot of sense. Even keeping that Q by itself, we know as Scrabble players how dangerous that Q uh, can be. And um, it can stay on your rack for many, many turns in a row unless you get some help from that U or from an I or maybe one of those combinations like AT. Okay, so Lindsay ma makes her play of doters here, and it is back over to Colin. Um, and I will start his clock now. So, okay, there we go. So Lindsay with a 70-point lead in the early going, almost entirely due to her nice play of Mayings here. But there is hope for Colin because Lindsay's got a Q that you see. It's going to be hard for her to deal with that Q productively. Um, so let's see. Gymnasia. Oh, wow. That's... Didn't even see that. Nice find by Richard on the Mayings turn. That would have been incredible to see a play of Gymnasia with those same letters, the plural of Gymnasium, uh, to the A of Adorns. But Mayings was a beautiful play by Lindsay there, nevertheless. Um, so it is over to Colin now. He, uh, While Lindsay does have that Q... Colin's letters are not that much better. He's got the V, the U. He has the ED combination on his rack. But other than that, the rest of his letters do not work very well together. So he's going to be hard-pressed to score very well. I think it's very likely he's going to try to get rid of at least some combination of the V, G, and U on this move and look for better things in the future. Oh, I see. Natalie found Gymnasia first. That's not surprising. Nice find, Natalie. Um, so, all right. It looks like Roved may be the choice here. Um, but uh, Colin continues to think about some other options. He does have to be careful about that clock. Um, but uh, yeah, if we're looking, I can just give you a sneak peek of Lindsay on her, on her side of things. Um, you can see she already has the Q ready to go on the board for her. So as soon as uh, Colin makes his move, she, she'll probably be ready to strike and get rid of that Q. Um, what dictionary are they playing with? They are playing with the Merriam-Webster dictionary here. So uh, a dictionary that is more commonly used in North America than overseas. Um so, all right. Oh, interesting. So maybe Guided is going to go down. That would be an interesting choice. It only scores 10 points, but it does do a good job of cleaning a lot of those um, annoying letters off of Colin's rack here. And that is what he goes with. He plays Guided. So only 10 points, um, and it's over to Lindsay now. And um, let's see. Oh, oh, she quickly... Uh, just checks 
whether re-guided is a word. There's no reason not to check. Um, I think pre-guided is a word. So we'll see what happens, whether guided is eventually extended. And you can see she does play her cue. Um, and uh, she will move things back to Colin. Uh, and you see Colin trying co-guided. So the players um, making use of that feature in the app where you can just place a word on the board and see how it stacks up. Is it a word? And uh, you can see it's uh, Colin, even after guided, he kept VO and he drew another V. So the players have been struggling with these duplicate letters. Why are duplicate letters something that we try to avoid in Scrabble? Well, there's several reasons. Um, the first is that every letter kind of has its unique attributes. And um, when you have all of the same letter on your rack, as you see Colin play mods here, so it's back over to Lindsay now. And uh, let's see what happens here. Actually, um, it looked like mods was a prescient play because it looks like it blocked the best place for Lindsay to play reelect. She could have played reelect with air in this part of the board right here before mods, right? You would have seen a play go down there. Hold on a second. There we go. Um, but instead, Mods was able to block that play, and Lindsay instead plays Elect at the top of the board through the T. Um, so back over to Colin now, and boy, this has just been a struggle for Colin. He has had two S's to work with in this game, and um, both of them uh, he's used on sort of these shorter plays with very difficult racks. So... Um, yeah, we'll see. Um, we'll see if he wishes that he had those S's for some different plays in the future. Um, but uh, yeah, you can see Colin is testing and seeing if he can play something underneath that Q that makes a lot of sense for him here to grab those extra points from the Q. And he plays wit here. Um, so nicely played. Um, uh, let me see. It's going to go back to Lindsay now. Lindsay's got pretty good tiles here, and I have to say, she's got a T for twit, right? So when you see wit hit the board, you're thinking to yourself, do, can I play something with a T in this spot going down? She has a T. We'll see if she either wants to play something with her T in that spot now, or whether she keeps that T on her rack for a future turn. Um, and okay, you see she's, she's aware of it. So it looks like Lindsay is going to play something in that spot. She has F on the board right now. She's testing the instead. So that looks like a reasonable idea. Lindsay up by 47 here and is on the cusp of extending that lead with a play hooking twit here. Um, so hold on a sec. All right. So she's she's having a think. She's she's taking an extra second to think about this. Um, you can see now she's uh, testing some other stuff. Maybe an underlapping play under the W instead. She's got hate on the board. Very very similar plays. It looks like she would get a couple more points by playing something. Oh, yeah, that's a cup. Okay, so you see the same letters score two more points by using the twit hook instead of playing underneath the W. Um, that does put the H in a pretty uh, nice spot right here. This H is going to score a lot of points sometimes with its triple when you put the H there. So we'll see if Colin, if she ends up playing hater, um, will Colin be able to find a good play that hits that H? You can see he's got some tough letters, including VVX on his rack. Um, so let's just see uh, which move, a lot of close moves here for Lindsay. Which move will she end up going with here to try to protect her 47-point lead? And... Uh, Seeing you guys in the chat suggesting that if the play is hate, ooh, okay, so instead of that, Lindsay plays just HE. She just plays HE, which is a lot tougher of a play to use for Colin in response. 
Um, so it's back over to him. That's going to be a much trickier play to take advantage of compared to hate. It doesn't place any letter in range of a triple word score, and he is really in some trouble here with these six consonants and only one vowel. When you have this many consonants, you're definitely looking for vowels on the board to try to play through, and you can just see on this board there is nothing like that available. Um, and you can see back over to Lindsay, you can see she has Rattier lined up on her rack. So this is a pivotal moment here for Colin. If he can somehow find a way to block the bingos that Lindsay is threatening, you can see again, um, Rattier would go down right here underneath H and E, making some two letter words. It would also go down with um, T H E, the. So Lindsay is threatening. Uh, a nice bingo here. Um, so we'll have to see. Uh, I honestly, so in this dictionary, the players are playing with right now, there are actually no letters for Colin that can go underneath this W. Um, so there's no way to sort of underlap here. He's got no tiles that play. Instead, he's getting ready to play pro. And um, that's the play that uh, he ends up going with. And let's see, if we pop it back to Lindsay. Did that manage to block the spots for Lindsay? Oh no, rattier and also um, tardier. Okay, so there we go. So Lindsay, you see she's putting it on the board nearly instantaneously. Um, the bingo, the second of the game for her is about to go down. Very, very nice uh, spot that's going to score 65 and really extend her lead. And there it is. Nice play by Lindsay. The second bingo of the game for her. She is in really strong position now, up by over 100 points as we go back to Colin. And his rack continues to suffer from the consonant overload, including two Vs on the rack here. And there's just not a lot of places... Um, now at least he has a way to play um, Vex if he wants to get rid of um, one of those Vs. He can do that here, but uh, it's it's still going to leave him in some trouble. Um, Jeremy says he should have exchanged on his first turn. The whole game is going downhill fast. Yeah, sometimes... Um, with those racks in the early going, you can see the best thing you can do sometimes is, even though it never feels good to take zero points on any move, um, exchanging tiles and getting out from those clunky racks as soon as possible actually sets you on a much better path for the rest of the game. And it looks like he's about to play Vex, which I like for him here. The nice thing about Vex is it gets rid of Oh, sorry, I don't have it on the right screen. Um, I apologize, you're not seeing uh, what Colin is doing, but uh, you can see now that he is on the verge of playing Vex, and um, he is putting some other words on the board just to test, but I, I could tell you he had Vex on there, so I think he's going to go back to that in all likelihood. The nice thing about that play is it takes a T-hook which will force Lindsay to sort of um, address that. So it looks like he is getting ready to play Vex. And there it goes. I, his finger is on the submit button. Oh, he pulls it back. Okay. Um, he's continuing to look. Um, yeah, these two Vs have been on his rack for many turns in a row. It would be great to see him. Uh, use one of those Vs up and keep his vowel here if possible. Um, so, uh, Rose says, exciting to watch, hard to keep up, but I'm rooting for Lindsay. Thanks for watching. Hopefully we can make this understandable and enjoyable for you. Um, you can see Lindsay is up, and there we go. Finally, the play that we thought Colin would make is Vex. It goes down. It's back over to Lindsay, but she does have a commanding lead here in the game of uh, not quite 100 points. And uh, you see she's drawn the first blank of the game, and she's drawn it with some high-scoring tiles like the J and the W. And you can see really quickly 
She plays that J off for 30 points to the triple with Taj, a word that's really, really helpful to learn if you are a newer player. The J is a tricky word to use sometimes, and having a word that ends in a J, like Taj and Raj, are really, really helpful. Um, so you see Lindsay showing off that word knowledge with Taj for 30. Back over to Colin. He's now down 100 again. And look at Lindsay's. You can see Lindsay has weapon blank set up on her tiles there on the rack. So should she get an S hook to play with, she can easily be bingoing a third time in this game to effectively put things out of reach. Um, so, but again, this is just the first game. We're playing a best of three. Um, and uh, Colin, even though he's in trouble in this game, he'll get a fresh game to start with in game two and see if he can do any better. But uh, things are not uh, out, of, out of range for him here in Scrabble. It never feels good to be down by 90 or 100 points, but that's why you play the whole game out. Um, a lot of crazy things can happen in Scrabble. Let's see if he can make some magic happen here somehow. Um, so. Again, he really does not have good letters. You can just sort of feel, looking at his tiles, the V, the M, the B, the C. That's four letters that are worth three or more points on the rack. And those letters that are so high scoring, they really like to be the star of the show on the racks where they appear. So when you have them all together, they sort of get in each other's way. They all want to be the star but they can't all be the star. Um, so it's very difficult to use them all in the same play. Not a lot of words have V, C, B, M in them. Um, so he's working with this P of pro. It looks like he's going to make an opening move of Vo under there, using up that V. That's the move he goes with. Um, that's a nice idea to sort of open the board a little bit at a deficit. The only issue is he did use up both of his vowels there. So we'll see if that affects him. It's back over to Lindsay now. Lindsay, I don't think, got a great place to play weapon anywhere, but it looks like woven is very quickly going to be coming down for her. Really, really nice idea. 36 points covering up that V in the triple lane. Um, and that is exactly what she hopes to achieve. And you can see when we cut back to her uh, game screen, you'll see she just drew the second blank. So Lindsay in great position here. She's got a um, she got a great um, no need to type the message. Um, something is blocking the view. I'm sorry. Um, is anybody else having any issue with some part of the screen being blocked? Definitely want to resolve that. It looks good on my end, of course. Um, so, all right, Lindsay's up by a lot of points. She's up on the clock as well, and that reminds me to start clocks for Colin. Um, and uh, he is struggling. It's just been every rack, seemingly, for Colin. He's had an overload of consonants ever since that first first set of racks that he had um in the beginning of the game um so hold on a second uh okay cool i think we're doing okay from a technical side of things perfect glad to hear that um so looks like colin is now playing in that lower left area to see if he can get some heavy consonants in that double word score that you see um, in this part of the board right here um, that does look pretty appealing if he's able to play something there um, but it's going to be hard for him to use very many of his consonants in that spot so um, we'll see what he can come up with there but uh, Lindsay certainly in really good shape here. Um, she's got both blanks on her rack. Um, it's worth noting um, that on this particular board, there aren't a lot of wonderful spots for her to play a bingo. She's going to have to try to play a bingo that ends in a very specific vowel right here, for example, or maybe you can fit something in here, but it's going to be very difficult. 
Um, but either way, even when you can't really do much with those blanks, um, it's definitely great when you see them on your rack and not your opponent's rack. That's the main thing. So when your opponent has the blanks, that's the way that they can come back in a game like this. So Lindsay, she's got a nice lead. We see Colin plays just EF for a solid score there, getting rid of a consonant, and he does draw a vowel in response, which he desperately does need. So um, question in the chat of don't see any good plays with the blank, maybe fish off pig. And let's see, there was another good question that I lost from Jeremy. With two blanks, how many points would you say it's worth playing off a blank for? That's a great question. So it's definitely the case um, when you have those two blanks, um, the first thing you should be thinking about, of course, is how can I use those blanks to play all of my letters and score a 50-point bonus for a bingo? That's the first thing that comes to mind. Um, if you're a newer player to Scrabble and you aren't um, particularly experienced at finding plays like that, as we see Lindsay plays Rip for a solid number of points, trying to draw into something that fits elsewhere on the board. Um, so it's back over to Colin, and he is immediately, as he should be, he's going for um, trying to hit that P to the triple word score. It makes total sense. Uh, give him a minute before we start his clock. It is a little bit late in the game here. Um, so, yeah, he's uh, he's going for any word he can get his hands on that fits there. It's going to be tough for him to find a word that um, actually plays to that triple word score in the corner, right? It's so tantalizing right here to try to hit that spot. Um, easily the best scoring spot on the board, but what does he even have that can fit there? Um, yeah, pencil. He sees that if there were one more space available, pencil might be available to him. We will start his clock now. Um, but yeah, it looks like no matter how much he would wish there to be a play there, I'm not really seeing anything for him as he continues to experiment and try some stuff. Um, yeah, not quite, not quite. Um, so yeah, a lot of the suggested plays just sort of go off of the board, unfortunately, unfortunately for him. Um, so, um, yeah. You can see he's so close to some six-letter words, they just don't fit. So he's eventually going to probably have to uh, look at a different component of the board here just because that one is is not... It's so tantalizing, but it's not going to end up uh, yielding a great play for him here. Um, yeah, sorry, Natalie. I know it's frustrating sometimes to watch... Um, oh, I guess... Um, Wait, did something happen with Lindsay's camera? Oh, okay, there we go. It's working now. Um, and let me just check. Yeah, I am muted, so good. Um, so yeah, the dictionary used here. Okay, so it looks like mince is played there. So after a long battle for Colin to try and hit that P in the corner, he plays mince in an effort to open the board. And I definitely expect Lindsay to get a bingo here. Um, I really think with these two blanks on her racks, you can see she has a bingo of agoutis lined up on the rack. That is a bingo that will play on this side of mints if she sees uh, that she can. I think she already is. Of course, from Lindsay's perspective, she definitely wants to try to find a play that plays on this side of mints if she can and um she is placing is she getting ready to try a gooties that's going to make i am on the board but maybe she has a different idea um either way Lindsay is extremely likely to um get a bingo down here with those two blanks that really puts this game out of reach she's already up by a hundred or so points um so let's see what she comes up with. I have every expectation that uh, we're going to see a play that basically puts puts the game away for this first game. Um, so she is looking. It's definitely, uh, I should note that 
in the event that um, Lindsay is cruising towards winning this first game, and if Colin were to win game two, it would force a decisive game three. And in that game, we will determine who goes first by the margin of victory in the two games, which I'm going to be making a note of that. Make sure I have a pen or something. Um, so, um, yeah, Colin Colin actually has the, the proper noun of Barkley on his rack, and he's testing a whole bunch of things over on his side of the game. Um, but, uh, yeah, he has pretty nice balanced letters now, but it seems like it's going to be a little too late for Colin as Lindsay is almost for sure going to be playing a bingo with these two blanks here. And even if not, she's got great scoring plays on the side of Mince where she can play parallel to Mince making two-letter words and score a boatload of points in that area. Um, so let's see. She's going for a different part of the board. Um, okay, she's going to play a goodies, and it looks like she's considering playing it in this spot here. Um, okay, maybe a different spot. So Lindsay trying a whole bunch of different ideas just to see where, okay, yeah, now I think it's coming here. So very, very nice, um, idea by her to test out some different spots on the board. And I think the bingo that we expect to see is coming now. Um, oh, hold on a second. Looks like a little bit of a lag of some sort. Um, okay, there we go. We do see the play is made. Hold on, let's go to Colin's rack. Okay, so um, a pretty decisive bingo there for Lindsay, but wow, Colin very quickly correctly sees that he actually has a great overlapping idea of placing the A right here in this spot for Ami and placing the K on the triple word score, he can really hit that super hard. You can see he's going for break for 58 points. Really, really nice idea here. Um, and now he may be shifting upwards to try to get some extra points for that B. Um, but uh, let me start his clock now, trying to just be cognizant of that. Um, so... Yeah, he'll eventually find a really nice play. 65 points for Bleak. Very nicely done by Colin there. That's a super impressive overlapping move. Almost as good as any bingo you're likely to see. So who needs who needs the bingo bonus when you can score 65 points with an overlap in that fashion? Awesome play um, by Colin there. So it's back over to Lindsay. She still, despite that big, big play, um, uh, and she's taking the time, she's taking the time to, um, congratulate, uh, her opponent on the really, really nice play. That's very nice using the in-game chat features there. Um, so yeah, that was really, really cool to see. So Lindsay has emulates. Wow. Okay. So another part of bleak that's, uh, so strong for Colin is it actually, uh, it actually blocked, uh, hold on, let me just go back to, oh, it is Lindsay's turn. It actually blocked Lindsay's spot where she could have bingoed with this seven letter word, inulase, alongside mints, the same way that bleak just went down. But of course, Colin blocked it and bought himself a little more time. Um, so it is still, this game is definitely in firm control for Lindsay. She's got over an 100-point lead, and there are only five tiles left in the bag. Unfortunately, I don't have that visible on the interface, which uh, is a bit of a, you know, you just have to take my word for it, of course. But the game is nearing its conclusion here. And uh, basically, you can see Lindsay is about to play plain in the lower right part of the board for a solid score. That's the move she ends up going with. Um, and, uh, that's going to put her up by clearly enough. I think there's still a tile left in the bag as well. So we'll go back to Colin here and we'll start his clock. You can see he does have that valuable Z, um, but it is a little bit too late, 
Um, the game is just sort of, <laughs> as we see, he makes a, a fun play there. That is not a, a valid alternate plural just yet, but maybe someday, uh, maybe someday we will see um, that word enter the dictionary. But it's a great idea. You can see this idea that Colin has to try to hit that Z on the triple letter score and try to connect that to the double word score. So if he can connect a Z in this spot with the double word score in this spot, he's going to score upwards of 60 or 70 points. Actually, yeah, that's depending on the other letters he uses, he's going to score in the 70-point in the range. So very smart idea by him to look in that spot. He's got great instincts to, to know where he should be scoring. Um, oh, I wonder if he's going to spot this really cool idea of, yeah, Richard notes it in the chat, of Czar would have played here with Bro. Instead, he plays Za. That's a really nice scoring play. And uh, he hits that Z for a really good score. And it is back over to Lindsay. Uh, you can see um, that Colin only has six letters left on the rack as the game is reaching its conclusion here. Um, so all Lindsay has to do is just sort of, she's, she's going to look for whether or not she may have a final bingo available, but I don't think she's likely to. And for her, all that's left is to try to make a couple more good plays and finish this game off. She will be the winner in game one of the community tournament finals. Um, so... Uh, after this game concludes, uh, we will take a short break for me to make a small announcement. Um, but then after that is concluded, um, we can um, uh, cut back to game two. So uh, it's actually a pretty big announcement for me. So I'm excited to, to bring you guys in on that. And... Um, Okay, we see Ash go down. Really nice idea. Hitting that H on the triple letter score for a, a very good score. Um, so now it's back over to Colin. And uh, he's got some high scoring letters that need to be dealt with here, including the F and the Y. So um, yeah, let's see if he's able to use those. He doesn't really have a good parallel play to za on the board he doesn't have zap or zag or anything like that um it's tricky to see actually where he's going to use those high scoring letters on this board but uh that's his task here as the game sort of winds down um you can see Lindsay has decent letters on her rack as well um ooh Okay, it looks like an attempt to play parallel of Fred or Fret. Um, in this dictionary, UR is not valid. So he's going to have to try something else. Um, yeah, he may, he may have to switch that Y for the F, and then he'll have a decent play in that spot of the board. So, um, yeah, but either way, this game is certainly... Um, in control for Lindsay here. In fact, I can even go so far as to say that she will be the winner in game one and that we're going to say that she is up one to nothing here as this game does reach its conclusion here. Um, okay, I think we are going to see a parallel play here go down. It looks like ER. Um, Maybe the F, yeah, that's what I was hoping to see. EF, that looks like the right idea. Um, so let's see, does Lindsay have a play with these letters E, L, N, U? I'm not sure she does. Um, but either way, we'll let this game sort of reach its conclusion without worrying too much about the time. Um, so, all right. Um what did you guys think of that game in the chat? Pretty impressive um, performance by Lindsay. Some words that are definitely off the beaten path, including mayings, tardier, agoutis, three bingos in one game. That's really, really impressive. Um, but uh, some pretty good... Oh, sorry, it was I didn't show that it was Lindsay's turn. Um, 
Oh, a suggestion of unguided there. Uh, very nice idea. Uh, that would have been a very clever... Um, that would have been a very clever extension to guided on the top of the board. As you can see, um, the players were considering extensions to that word in the early going, but often as the game progresses, um, you sort of forget about those. It's really, really hard in Scrabble. You're just juggling all of these different ideas as the game progresses, and it's really easy to forget um, extensions to words on the board that you were thinking about in the early going. Um, so I know I haven't started Colin's clock yet. I just don't want to push him over. This is one of his first uh, experiences playing with a clock. The game is really close to being over. Um, so we'll just um, sort of uh, take a hands-off approach as this game reaches its conclusion. He's got four... Um, he, oh, you can see on Lindsay's rack, sorry, if we just cut to her screen, you see she does have an E left. She's getting ready to play Ami for six points. So she does actually still have a letter on her rack. Um, so, uh, okay. Yeah, a couple. So it looked like Colin was about to play Die in the upper corner. And maybe that's what he will go with here. And once he does that, it'll be back to Lindsay. She'll play her E, and the first the first game of the series will be over. Um, maybe I'll start his clock just to give him a little nudge. Um, so, all right, let's see. Let me pause for a minute. <laughs> Take a swig of water. I've been talking. Pretty nonstop. Hope you guys enjoyed the first game here. Um, all right, Colin makes his play back over to Lindsay. She's going to play her E, um, and, uh, that's going to be it for game one. So let me actually unmute myself. All right, so that's it. Lindsay plays her E, and, uh, she emerges victorious in the first game. Um, that was a tough one for Colin. He made some great plays with overlapping moves like Bleak, but Lindsay with three bingos, that's really tough to overcome for anyone. As you can see, one of them on the screen there of Mayings. So, all right, the players are going to stand by, um, and Colin will wait for my command to start up game two. But before we do that, let me just quickly... Um, stand by just a minute um, as we I get ready to give a little announcement here. Oops, not for these. So stand by just a moment and hold on. It's going to be a quick announcement that I'm making here. And it's going to be my camera. Bear with me, everybody, as I get this ready. I just have an announcement I'm very, very excited to make. Um, okay, so... Um, we'll start the video here. Okay, there I am. Okay, so let me see if this looks correct. Yes, all right, hello. Ooh, wow, that's really low resolution. Okay, um, well... Um, I don't think I can mess with this, unfortunately, without upsetting the entire apple cart of my interface here. So I'm sorry for my pixelation. Um, but I am just, uh, as a quick break between games one and two, I have a big announcement that I'm really, really excited to make. And that announcement is that I am officially joining the Scopely and Scrabble Go team as a full-time employee. Um, this has been something that's been in the works for a little while now. I'm really, really excited. Um, if you're a Scrabble fan or a Scrabble Go fan, hopefully you've been enjoying my content. You see some videos that I've been posting. I'm loving to bring you guys content here by hosting these events. And uh, now you're going to see lots more of the same from me as I am officially coming aboard the Scrabble Go team. Um, and I'm going to be spending pretty much all my time making Scrabble content, driving forward some Scrabble 
um, initiatives as, as best I can. Um, it's a really, really exciting moment for me. And uh, I'm just thrilled that um, Scopely and Scrabble Go and I, we have such alignment on um, the goals that we have for Scrabble. We're trying our best to bring Scrabble to you guys. Any diff any skill level, any experience level of Scrabble, we're trying to, to um, bring you guys Scrabble content that you guys want to see, that makes you uh, excited to play Scrabble, play your friends in Scrabble, talk about Scrabble, um, and um, I'm really excited to get started. It's a really big moment for me. Um, so thanks everybody for the kind words in the chat. I really appreciate that. Um, and uh, this is, uh, we, we've been waiting. I've been bottling this up until National Scrabble Day, um, until uh, you know now to uh, make my announcement, but uh, you'll be hearing a lot more from me about what that means going forward. Um, I'm really excited. So, all right, without further ado, let me cut back to our game. Don't start yet, players. Let me just um, cut back to the game screen, let you guys see your timers again. It's definitely very helpful, and we will get me back on screen as well in just a minute. Stand by, I promise. Um, I'm so sorry for the grainy video there, but it would have taken a little too long to get that looking good. All right, the players can now see their timers. Hold on. Resetting the timers to 20 minutes. You can see it is one to nothing in favor of Lindsay after game one. Let me get my camera back on screen, and that's it. Once we get that, oops, hold on a second. I cut to the bracket by accident. There we go. Okay, players, um, we are ready to start game two. Um, so Colin will be going first in this game, I think, and uh, anytime he's ready, we will be off to the races. He's putting on his rally cap, his lucky cap. Um, so, all right, um, I am now muted and he should be ready to rock anytime here. Um, all right, there he goes. Okay, game two is now underway. We're going to start Colin's clock. And once again, the uh, a tale of two games, uh, very similar racks for um, for Colin here. He's got U's and O's just the same way he had in the first game, but he has a blank to go with it. So what I would love to see from Colin here is if he's able to use up his one of his O's, maybe his Y and U, if he were just to play the word Y-O-U on the board, that would be a great start to the game for him, I think. Um, so thank you, everybody. Appreciate the kind words in the chat regarding my announcement. I'm really excited, as I said. Um, but okay, he has a play of Yoni on the board. That looks solid. That scores well. It keeps that blank for next turn. Um, the only issue is that <laughs> he's going to try out Yoni, which... If you're a Scrabble player, you know that you can put those three letters, O-U-T, as a prefix on a whole lot of words. Um, so, yeah, um, that's um, a reasonable try, but I don't, yeah, that's not a valid word. So, okay, it's over to Lindsay. Let's let Lindsay um, get, a, get her game underway as she accepts Colin's request here. Um, okay, and she's going to see the play of Yoni on the board, and you can see that Lindsay's drawn well. Wow. Okay, so in the first game between these two players, as we're going to start her clock now, you can see she bingoed three times in the first game, and very quickly she sees the seven-letter word on her rack. You can see her setting it up. Refutal. What an idea. For her underneath Yoni for a really, really nice score. Oh, and she's even seeing that she can place it underneath Yoni with four overlaps of two letter words. What a move. She sees it nearly instantaneously and she spotted a wonderful place to play it there. Wow, what a way to start 
for Lindsay here after three bingos in the first game between these two players. She immediately answers back with an awesome overlapping play of refutal for 78 points to take an early lead. Awesome. That is a great play. Um, so it is back over to Colin now. He once again finds himself um, looking up at Lindsay in the scoreboard. Um, hold on a second. What happened to... Well, I see some of the uh, scores are a little out of frame. That's okay. Oh, I see what I did. There we go. Perfect. I fixed it. Um, let's freeze that in place. All right. Um, so, yeah, that's a tough break for Colin, obviously. Once again, a quick bingo for Lindsay, striking first to take that lead. He does have a blank on his rack, but again, just like the start of the previous game for Colin, he's got two O's and two U's. That is definitely his biggest issue on this rack. He has to do his best to use up one of those O's, one of those U's at a minimum. If he can use more, that's great. And ideally, he will keep that blank on his rack and gun for one of those bingos that gets you those 50 extra bonus points for him. Um, so, okay, he's considering just unit there. That's a good idea to get rid of at least one of the two U's. He will need some help from the tile bag if he makes this move. You can see on his rack remains three vowels and only one consonant if he were to make this move. So he would really, really want to see two more consonants come onto his rack after a play like this. So I'm sure he will continue to think, yeah, and he's pulling it back. And um, maybe he will go for something that uses one more vowel at least. Um, Jane in the chat says both great players. You're absolutely right. These players have fought through a very difficult bracket of players to make it to the finals. And this is the play I hope to see from Colin. I was hoping he would play Lauer. The great thing about this is that it uses up both an O and a U, which with two of those on his rack here, it's a really good idea to do this. However, if we look back over on Lindsay's rack, she's got a C. And does Lindsay know the uh, the archaic extension of Clower? Yes, she does. She plays it instantly. She's getting ready to play a huge play to the triple with that C. Beautiful. That's what hooks do for you. Um, a hook like Clower is going to score so, so many points in that spot. And you can see there it goes for a very, very impressive score in that spot there. Um, so uh, really, really nice play by Lindsay there. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I forgot to switch it back onto her rack, so you guys didn't see that. I apologize. But she makes a beautiful play there of Chid and Clower, Chid being the past tense of Chide in this uh, context. Um, okay, so she played that move really fast. It's back over to Colin, nearly as fast as you can blink. He makes a beautiful, wow, this is amazing. You can see he placed unbonds on the board, and that is a great, great idea. Um, unbonds seems like it should totally be a word. I'm really impressed with his anagramming ability to find that play. Um, I wonder, though, if he's going to see that he can play something like unboned right here to take the bones out of a fish he can play something like that there and i feel like he's so close he's so close to spotting it because he's already found unbonds which is a totally plausible word it's just not in our dictionary here um do we know what the finalists average word scores are um i believe that both finalists have word scores either in the high 20s or low 30s. I think both of them are roughly 27 or 8 as far as average word score, which is quite impressive. Um, that's a lot of points per turn um, for these players. So um, Colin is continuing to test, think about, he's doing absolutely the right thing. He has a blank and he's sort of um, trying to open his mind to all the possibilities that he might have. Wow, oh, he's going to potentially try to find something with bound. 
Um, but the, the the rest of the letters after a play like bound would not work well enough to get a bingo down. Okay, so um, now he's seeing that he can make a nice overlap above Yoni with his B. He's going to test some different words here. Um, I wonder if he'll remember that not only can the B fit in this spot right here, but also the D. That would be really, really nice if he was able to think about that and uh, play something like Unbound. Okay, instead, he does just play Bow. That's a solid overlapping play for him. It's back to Lindsay. Colin's got a blank. Um, and uh, Lindsay, though, still has a nice sized lead. And uh, after Lindsay's play of Chid, she has drawn the K, which is a pretty nice scoring tile. We'll see what um, she's able to do with that K. It's worth noting that um, the, the, by, the, the BYE hook that was just played in this spot by Colin, it actually takes an A in front as well. So you could definitely see a play with a buy go down in this spot that would score very well. Um, look for that to be played in the near future in this game. Um, uh, Kate says, thank you. I might have to give the next tournament a go. You definitely should. Everybody's having a blast playing in these events. There's some great prizes, as you saw, including a custom tile for the champion. And, okay, you can see Koi go down for Lindsay there. Um, she just uses her K and her O. Those were probably her two weakest bingo tiles. So she's definitely looking to um, go for another bingo here, which, as we've seen, she definitely has the ability to find and play a lot of bingos. Really impressive skills on display by Lindsay here so far in that area. Um so, um, okay, so back over to Colin. He has this X on his rack. He's definitely going to want to uh, figure out a way to score as well as he can with that X. Um, and he's spotted that he has some good overlapping potential in this area of the board with the I and E, but it's going to be difficult for him to uh, hit that spot for very many points. Um, so he does have a, an interesting spot to play the X right here. Um, he's got a spot here to play his X if he thinks of it. The very tricky to spot word XED as in X marks the spot. It could be playable right there. Um, so that word is particularly difficult to spot because very, very few words start with an X. It's hard to think about words that start with an X like that. Um, he does have it available. Um, Richard in the chat, and I also have to say, uh, nice to see Richard in the chat. I forgot to mention uh, earlier when calling out Richard's really good suggestions that Richard Spence was our winner of the previous iteration of the Scrabble Go community tournament. Um, the previous iteration that took place, uh, in the last calendar year, of course, Ooh, nice play. The play that was just suggested by Richard, you can see that do the play that is spotted by Colin. Nice, nice play by him there. We love that play from him using his X for a very solid score on the triple letter score. That's a nice play. Um, so well played on that move by Colin for sure. Um, it's back over to Lindsay, and you can see the hook I mentioned earlier of a buy that's coming into play right now, and Lindsay knows it, and she spots a really nice play of Raji. Um, so, oh, and she's even, oh, this is a really interesting idea. She's even putting an S on the end, and if you're watching this and you're a newer player and you're saying, wait, I thought the S's were really valuable. I'm not, I shouldn't be using them for just a couple extra points. Well, you can see that Lindsay has two S's on this rack. Every S that you have after the first is successively less valuable because the value of the S is using it with your other tiles to hook on to words on the board. When you have two on your rack, you're not really getting any, whoops, you're not really getting any extra value from it. Um, so she plays her second S for three extra points. I really like that idea 
Um, I really like the idea for her to use that S here, and she is definitely gunning to hit a bingo with Clowers as soon as she can. Uh, but as you can see, she's drawn the Q. That's going to slow her up a little bit in her quest to bingo again. So that's exactly what Colin needs. Um, he needs something to slow Lindsay down while he gets back in the game. Hopefully a bingo for him sooner rather than later um, to keep this thing close. You can see with that blank that Colin has, he's got three E's and two N's. Again, I keep saying it, duplicated letters are really just uh, a problem that present themselves repeatedly in Scrabble. And when you have them, you should be thinking, how can I resolve this problem? How can I use up those duplicated letters so I don't have to deal with them on subsequent turns? Um, so you can see he is considering just playing and in that area. Um, and now he's going to try some different combinations to see if he can use an E. It makes total sense. Uh, it makes total sense that he would want to use an E here, given that he has three of them on his rack. Um, so let's see what he can do. Um, David says Lindsay Cott. Yes, she definitely will be looking to play Cott anywhere she can. There's a great place for her to play Cott right here on her next turn. So um, I fully expect that that's going to be Lindsay's next play. The real trick is can Colin... Uh, make a move here that um, gets enough of his letters into balance for his next turn that he'll be able to get a bingo and close this gap in the game. Um, so he's definitely testing some different spots. Um, this is for sure a difficult move. It's definitely the case that um, in Scrabble, there's lots of positions where... Uh, the best move available to you isn't going to make you happy, right? So every, not every Scrabble turn has a solution that's very satisfying. What you're looking to do is in situations like this where there really is no satisfying play available, you're just looking to make the best of a bad lot of choices. So let's see if Colin can do that. He's considering playing and for 12. That is what he plays. Um, so he plays and... For 12, he draws an N back. Let's see. He's definitely got bingos here. So Lindsay is right about to play Cot, as was suggested. And I think I'm expecting Colin to play something like Weenies on his next turn. Let's see if he can. So uh, as expected, Lindsay with her, a really nice way to shed that Q. And uh, it's back over to Colin. Um... And let's see what he can come up with here. Uh, I'll start his clock in just a second. Um, just there is a there is an imbalance right now. Again, Colin, a newer player to playing with that clock. I don't want to rush him too, too much, but we'll start it now. So he's got a blank. He's got an S. Those are really good tiles. Let's see what he can come up with here. Um, he's definitely got the right idea. He's putting that ERS suffix into place um, that is one of the most common suffixes in the game of scrabble when you have those letters it makes every bit of sense to place them in order and see what other letters you have so he's doing that and you can see he's just got one too many vowels oh boy um, so he has wieners on the board I wonder, oh, I hope he doesn't play this because he has weenies instead and clowers for a bingo bonus, right? Okay, so he's recalled his tiles. Um, he has a uh, definitely a, a few options here. Uh, seven letter words. He's got a few options to the R of clowers. I feel like he's so close to spotting them. Um and this is where that time comes into play, where you sort of are cognizant that the clock is ticking in a tournament game and you don't have as much time. You know, if you're just playing on your phone, you might have a rack like this and you can't find anything and you just put it back in your pocket and say, I'll try again. I'll try again in an hour, right? I'll try again uh, when I'm done with my work day. You can't do that now. He's got to come up with a play. He can't just come back to this later. 
So uh, let's hope. Let's hope he can make this a game. We're hoping. Um, so, oh, show Colin's screen. Sorry. Thank you. I apologize. Thank you, Steve. Good call. I forgot to um, set it there. Oh, he's got... Uh, I wonder if he's going to play something like Sheenier, having a Sheen. I think he is potentially seeing that. Oh, man. I thought he was going to try that. I, I thought he had that spelled out. I really expected. Um, so hopefully... All right, it looks like maybe he's just going to pluralize that Q and get some extra points. He plays E-N-S. So, so close um, to seeing the bingos there. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. Okay, he plays E-N-S instead. Oh, man, I really thought he was so close to getting that bingo down. Those S's, you can see um, that uh, he's used them in situations where he's been really close to a bingo and those S's are so valuable in tandem with the blank. So you can see he's drawn another really vowel heavy rack. Um, so Jeremy Smith, hey Jeremy, nice to see you, says he can sit, he can hit the double word score with Eansier. That would have been a nice idea with Clowers for sure. Um, so it is back over to Lindsay. Uh, the bingo bonus would have been much needed for Colin there. You can see that Lindsay is up by exactly 100 points in this game. Um, so Lindsay dealing with the opposite problem from Colin right now. She's got six consonants and one vowel. Colin has four vowels and one consonant. So it is a tale of two racks. But in general, when you have an overload of either one or the other type of letter, it's definitely better to have consonants on most boards because the consonants score better, right? All the vowels only score one point, um, and consonants can score a whole bunch of points. Um, so Lindsay considering playing hearts, but R-E-N-S, not valid in this dictionary. She can play something like halts in that spot, making lens, and I think she's going to play that now. Yes, there it is. Okay. So you can see Halts is about to go down, scoring very, very nicely. 36 points for Lindsay here, which we like to see. Um, really, really good idea by her. She is the one who is up by 100 points. She doesn't have to worry about getting a bingo down. All she has to do is keep scoring, and you can see she's drawn the second blank as well, which is bad news for Colin. Um Okay, so back over to Colin. You can see he's got vowel overload, and he's considering simply dumping two of them in the upper right corner of the board. That's a good idea. Another idea for him would be to play something like OG to this triple word score, but the idea to burn those vowels does make a lot of sense. Oops, okay, we'll be back to Lindsay now. Um, so, all right, let's see. Um... Lindsay with six consonants, no vowels, and a blank. She's definitely right to be looking at the um, the open vowel on the board of the A of halts, and she does exactly that. She plays car. She's looking to draw more vowels in response. Um, and she does draw one, but it comes with the J. So Lindsay's going to continue... Uh, oh, and look at Colin. All right, so Colin, after O-E, he drew the V and another S, and he's going to be getting that critical bingo down. He plays it very quickly of severing. Nice play by Colin to cut the gap considerably here, uh, which he desperately needed in this game. So he's probably going to need more help after this, but nice play to get a bingo down with that blank, that's what we like to see when you draw that blank, trying to use it to get all of your letters off in one move. And Lindsay responds quickly by playing her J with Jin. It looks like she's going to play that. That looks like a really, really nice idea. Um, the J, not the best bingo tile. It's a great scoring tile. But when you have it along with the blank, the J sort of becomes a letter you'd like to get rid of in order to secure a bingo as soon as possible. So really nice idea by Lindsay. You can just tell that she's got great instincts uh, in that way. Oh, nice idea here by Colin. Oops, sorry. Let me show you guys what he's thinking. He, 
first put Gazy on the board with his rack, but he plays Sizey for a wonderful score here, cutting the gap even more. So that's actually a wonderful play by Colin um, to use his Z and Y on the triple word score for 48 points. Two really good plays by Colin in a row have cut the gap quite a lot here. Um, he needs a little more help to continue to cut that gap, and he needs Lindsay not to bingo. Basically, he's got to somehow hope that Lindsay continues to avoid a bingo in this situation, which um, I think she may have some stuff to the Y that are very difficult plays, I think. Does she have, like, tertiary? Um, I'm not sure. Um, let me know if the chat, if you think she had a bingo there. Um, but instead, she plays Grit, which makes a lot of sense. Um, and it's back over to Colin. And he's got these really high-scoring letters. You can see Lindy is up a lot, but Colin can maybe find a way with his V, W, M, these really high-scoring tiles. I think his best pathway back into the game is probably to score as many points as he can get um, with these high-point tiles and hope again that um, that Lindsay does not get that bingo that's likely to finish off the game. Um, so let's see, what can he come up with here? Um, he may be about to try Wavy, which he can do with if he puts an E in there. Um, so if he plays... Okay, maybe he's just going to play Wavy with that spelling. Let's start his clock now. Um... So Wavy can be spelled with an E inside it, and that would pump up the score of that move by a fair margin. Instead, it looks like he's headed to a different part of the board now, um, trying to hit that, excuse me, triple word score, which makes a lot of sense, but it's going to be very difficult to hit that C in that spot. Not a lot of words ending in C um, that don't end in IC. Um, so I feel like, it's going to be hard for either player to hit a word that reaches the triple with that C there, but he's going to give it a shot. There's definitely, it's possible. Um, oh, avec would have been a nice play, not in our language, but there are many French words. We saw ami be played in the previous game, but no avec here for Colin, which would be an absolutely great play. Must That would be a, just what the doctor ordered for him. Um so he's continuing to try some different moves. Um, but uh, yeah, it's 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 so tempting, but he's back to Avec. He, he clearly wants that word to be valid in the worst way because he knows it would be such a good play if it were valid. But unfortunately, it's, it's not going to work. He's thinking about playing Vac, and he does uh, play Vac in the upper part of the board. So back to Lindsay, um, you can see that uh, the lead has, the gap is considerably less than it was just a few turns ago. Really nice plays of Severing and Sizey for Colin have cut the gap. Ooh, but a really nice, we call this, look at that, look at that way that Lindsay has put the E in here. We call, oops, sorry for the circle. It's right here. Um, we call that an insertion play where there's words on the board. Um, I don't know why my drawing thing is off, um, but you can tell basically there, there's spots on the board where you can make a place a tile right in between and insert them in between letters on the board. She's seen a great spot to do that right there. So um, maybe that's what she'll end up playing. Um, she may also play somewhere else. Lindsay's got that blank. She's got two T's. She's got an O and an F. Ultimately, the best thing that Lindsay can keep for trying to bingo on a subsequent turn is probably something like ERT blank. So she'll be looking at ways that she can play off. Oh, okay. She uh, she plays. Oh, wow. What an idea by Lindsay as we'll, we'll cut to Colin's screen while she levels up to level 220. Very impressive for her. Um and uh, it's back over to Colin now. So I think what Lindsay was doing there, she played off her O with Oka, and I think she drew, we'll see what she drew, but I'm almost positive that she's going to play Fluttery on her next turn to the Y of Sizey. I'm very, very, I'm thinking she did that intentionally. Um, 
playing off her O, knowing that if she drew a U or an A, she would have fluttery or flattery on the lower part of the board. I'm almost positive that's what she was thinking, and that is a brilliant play, if that's true. I'm almost sure it is. Um, so, yeah, we can even ask Lindsay about that at some point. She's continuing to she's continuing to level up. She's working on getting back to the game. There we go. Okay, so all right, Colin plays wire. It's back over to Lindsay. And let's see if her plan comes to fruition. So again, she played her O right here, hoping to probably draw either an A or U to hit a big big play in this spot. Um we'll see if that we'll see if step two of the plan comes together. Either way, Lindsay is in good shape here. She's up by a solid margin. She has the second blank. Um, Colin has been struggling with Vs and Us on his previous couple of turns. Okay, she's going to use her F in a really nice scoring spot for 23 points instead. So that's a nice idea. She continues to be right on the cusp of getting a bingo down here. Um, as we'll go back to Colin and we'll give him a second of a reprieve um as he gets situated here and uh he's gonna he's gonna go for something ending in the y of sizey oh i think he's one letter off from gleamy okay he's going to play gleamy here um this is an interesting idea simply because i <laughs> i don't think pagleamy is gonna work uh, but it's worth a try you never know um, when you're putting words on the board um, you just never know when you'll get a surprise of a word being valid um, that uh, you didn't expect. How many A's and U's were unseen? Good question. Um, I don't have access to that. I'm not uh, following along particularly closely with the unseen tile pool. Um, but uh, yeah, maybe we can count that as, all right, we're going to start his clock here as he's trying anything he can get his hands on in this corner. <laughs> of the board oh my god look at this look at this wow incredible amazing i did not even see that available and that is an epic epic play by colin he put it together over time he started out thinking about ways that he could hit that Y and he came up with an amazing, an amazing bingo of gameplay for 101 points. Really, really impressive. Now Colin has vaulted his way back into the lead. That is truly an awesome play by him. Amazing to cut, cut the deficit turn after turn and then hit such an enormous play. Sorry. Uh, I, I will give Colin a couple seconds. I let his clock run because I was so astounded by that nice play. But I have to say, Lindsay is still in good shape here because you can see she is about to play rotates and abides, and she's going to seize the lead right back from Colin. So a beautiful play of gameplay by him, but Lindsay strikes right back to retake the lead. This is going to be right down to the wire. Um, so we'll pause Colin's clock because I didn't hit it in a timely manner last time. Um, Colin, um, is sitting on an actual, he actually has a seven letter word on his rack that does not fit anywhere on the board. Um, which is, that's a frustrating, uh, that's frustrating, but Lindsay is up a lot. Um, after that epic comeback with gameplay by Colin, what a highlight moment that was. Um, now, Colin is still facing a deficit. You can see Lindsay, sorry, let me cut to Colin's screen. You can see Lindsay is still up by almost 40 points. There are only two tiles in the bag. Um, so that is definitely, um, the time is sort of ticking on this game for Colin. He may need another bingo in order to win this game. I'm not sure that simply scoring a lot of points is going to do it for him here, as I will now start his clock again. Um, so he may now be thinking, yeah, it looks like he's going to potentially play Bonnier. That would be a really nice idea. Yes. Oh, well, he's thinking about maybe Pinner, something like that. 
Yeah, Pinner, that's a decent idea. Um, so 36 points will cut the gap significantly, but you can see on Lindsay's rack, she's got some good scoring tiles. If Pinner is the play um, for Colin here, she will respond with something like Mewed for too many points. Um, so... Colin is thinking he wants Pioneer. He wants Pioneer to be good. Um, but it's it's not quite there. He needs an extra E. So he's working on getting a nice play to this R. Um, I think probably his highest scoring play in that spot is Bonnier. But even then, I don't think that's going to be enough given that Lindsay is up by a pretty solid margin. A play like Bonnier is only going to even the score, and she's got really good letters in the end of the game. You can see she even has something like Mewed in this spot right here with four, well, oh, sorry, five overlaps. It's going to score too much for Colin to overcome. Okay, he spots Bonnier. That looks like his strongest play here. Nice idea. 36 points. He's about to play it, and he does. Okay. So now the score is a dead heat. It is a tie game. You can see the bag is empty. Colin has P-L-E left on his rack. Lindsay with three E's, M-D-W-I. The game is tied. You know that Colin is going to go out on his next turn with an outplay, almost certainly. And... Uh, yeah, you can see Lindsay plays. She's thinking of playing Mew for 33. That should be enough to outrun the potential play of Pale or something in this spot through the A of Rotates. That won't score enough for Colin. Uh, meanwhile, looking at Colin's side of things, you can see he's doing his best to come up with a way to score a lot of points with his uh, P, L, and E. But Lindsay is definitely in command here. She's going to score in the 30s, and I think she's about to spot her really high-scoring move. Yes, that's going to sew this up. 41 points for Mewed. I think that should easily do it. It actually, yeah, look at that. Beautiful play for her. 40 points, 41 points in that spot. The power of two-letter words. You're seeing that right there. The M, the W, all of these overlaps combining to score 40 points in the end game, And uh, I think that's going to be too much for Colin to overcome. Um, but wow, what an effort by Colin here as I will start his clock in just a second. And hold on, we'll go back to his side of things here. Um, incredible, incredible effort. Um to, to get that beautiful bingo of gameplay down. That's just an amazing play. You can see uh, Colin is wishing that P-E-L were valid. I'm going to start his clock now. Um, and you can just see that if that were valid, he might be able to sneak ahead. Actually, I don't even think then he would sneak ahead because he is down by 41 points here. So... Lindsay with just an E and an I on her rack. Colin is down by 41. That means he needs to get 37 points on this play if he wants to at least tie the game. I think he actually needs to win the game to force uh, a decisive game three, and you can just see that's not going to happen. Uh, on this board, there is no way to get anywhere close to that number of points with P-E-L. So, man, Colin really gave it his best shot here. A pretty epic comeback in this game. Had Colin been the one to draw that second blank after gameplay instead of Lindsay having that blank, um, this could have been an epic, epic comeback by Colin in this game. But instead, it looks like it's going to fall just short as I think maybe he can only play Pelt or something to the T of Grit. I'm not sure what else he even has. Um, and I see the timer. Um, basically, you know, we're trying to be we're trying to be tolerant of the timer. I see it's about to hit zero. Um, I'll just stop it at one, just because we know we know the game is basically finished. Um, we don't need to mess around. Eventually, I think he's going to see Pelt. And that's the best he's likely to be able to do here. Um, 
So, wow, Lindsay Shin looks like she will be the winner of our community tournament 2021. Really awesome series of games. Lindsay played amazing. She got a ton of bingos down in both games and showed. Well, actually, in this game, it looks like she only got refutal down and really made her way to her score with overlapping plays and good scoring plays. Um so yeah, Colin, at some point, we're probably going to have to cut, cut him off and tell him that uh, as much as he's doing his best to um, come up with a 37 point play, I think we have to sort of um, <laughs> make sure that he knows that uh, we, have, we do have to finish the game here. Um, but uh, kudos to him for absolutely exhausting every avenue available to him. Um, but yeah, I think in a minute, I'm going to say that, uh, we're going to assess that he's used up his time. Um, let's give him another few seconds to make a play or not. Um, I think he's, he's tried a bunch of these already. <laughs> so, um, all right. Let's see. Um, Just want to give him a chance. All right, he, yeah, he needs to, he's about to make a play. Oh, I thought he was about to play there. Okay, he's going to play PE, maybe. <laughs> now he's going for uh, a pyramid construction. Um, yeah. All right, um, let's just uh, see what happens when the timer goes to zero. Okay, I think I'm going to... Oh, does Lindsay not have an outplay here? Yeah, that's kind of interesting. Um, but either way, I think we're going to assess that um, the game is complete. So... Okay, guys. I think we're going to assess that this game is mostly complete. I'm not sure, Colin, if you have a play in mind. Um, I've sort of been trying to keep that clock from hitting zero for a little while. Um, so if you're if you're able to find something, uh, it does it it does look like Lindsay is very likely to have wrapped this up with the lead that she has right now. Um, so. That could be a good move, not to rush, but um, so, okay. All right, so he does play PE. That seems like a very reasonable play. Um, and it's going to be back to Lindsay and she is going to quickly play her E as you can see, I couldn't even switch back to her side of the screen. And then of course, it'll be up to Colin to find a spot to play his L somewhere, which he obviously needs, um, something like 30 points for this L, which that is too, you're asking too much of an L to score 30 points by itself. So a pretty amazing game two here um, between these two players. As you can see, Colin looking around for any spot to play that L. And he does find a good spot to play it for a solid score. And that's it. Wow, that was an amazing game. Colin really made a game of it with some incredible plays. But Lindsay, again, just showing off some great bingo finding skills and great scoring plays in this game. So Lindsay will be, as we know, the winner in game two. And that will secure her a two to zero win in the match, as you see. Let me just um, let me just see now. Hold on. We have this announcement screen. You guys don't need that, but hold on just a minute as we can get the, what is happening here? Okay, so standby players. Let me just make sure that we can chat with you guys. 
in just a second. I will let you know. Let me see if I can ask you guys to unmute. I think I will have done that. And now I'm going to come back on camera myself in just a minute. Um, okay, you guys are audible. So, wow, congrats, Lindsay, on your victory. Great playing, Colin, to make game two in particular so close. You, I mean, Lindsay got off to such a wonderful start. An amazing bingo of gameplay for 101. Yeah. Temporarily gave you the lead. Um, what did you guys think of, of that match? How, how did it go for you? We'll start with, uh, we'll start with Lindsay. Um, what were your thoughts on the match? Yeah, no, I was definitely um, feeling very lucky to open up with a bingo there. Um, and then gameplay out of nowhere was was a beautiful find. Um, I, I never never would have seen that myself. Um, that, that was beautiful and scary from my end. So very nice find. Um, and, and it was certainly I was very lucky to come out on top on that one. Yeah, it was actually super cool from Colin's perspective to see um to see how that sort of came together he was looking at the why he had some words on the board and then discovered that he had this amazing uh compound word in that spot so it was really really cool to see colin sort of build that word using his anagramming ability um was that like a eureka moment for you colin there when you spotted that word well yes it was actually um <laughs> You know, it's just kind of uh, even more so just to give the viewers uh, something to cheer about as game one wasn't, uh, I wasn't quite in it. So, uh, um, yeah, you know, to claw back in it and um, I knew I was in tough with, uh, you know, Lindsay making refutal right off the bat in a great spot. And I'm sure I missed uh, some bingos along the way. At the beginning, I had severing. Um, I had the blank. I didn't want to just let it go. Uh, just making any old word, I, I kind of knew I had to bingo with it. So um, kind of been tough at the beginning with uh, some V's and U's. And um, No question. I'm not very good at, at <laughs> using those letters. I always say the U should be worth more than one. But, I think uh, you and many other people uh, say that <laughs> about that letter. And I think the V as well, it seems like you had a lot of V's in these two games. And uh, I think most people sort of have that... Um, visceral feeling that the v isn't isn't that helpful to their cause um no matter what type of rack they have so yeah certainly in game one it was very tough sledding a lot of consonant heavy racks certainly after that first one and some really great playing by Lindsay as well on the other side with those three bingos um so yeah definitely really impressive in that first game the bingo of mayings by Lindsay. that's sort of a great example of it's for me with words like ings, um, it's really hard to know whether those words are valid or not. But in Scrabble Go, you can put it on the board and uh, just see what the game tells you, right? I mean, that, that must have been a good feeling. I, I will admit that I, I did not know mains and I simply tried it just knowing that it's the void challenge. So, um, that, that, again, that was very lucky on, on my end. Uh, it works both ways. I mean, hats off. I would have done the same thing. And I was just kind of lots of head shaking on my end. And I thought, you know, I didn't know that was a word either, but I probably may have discovered it. <laughs> I, I won't forget it now. <laughs> yes. Now. Yeah. yeah. That'll be a word you are unlikely to forget, um, Lindsay, now. Um, but uh, yeah, that was really impressive display. I hope everybody enjoyed those games. Congrats again to Lindsay. I'm sure at some point soon you're going to be getting, if I just cut quickly to the prizes, you can see that Lindsay has won this beautiful tile, uh, the champion's tile, but of course Colin winning the tile of his choice, a bunch of gems, and some uh, months of Scrabble Club subscription as well. So um, to, to the players, I just want to say thank you guys so much for, for joining us and bearing, bearing with us early on. And... Um, it was a lot of fun to uh, watch you guys play today. So um, thank you so much for, for letting me be a part of it. And thank you, Colin, for, for some wonderful matches. Thank you too, Lindsay. And uh, as I always will, and Glenn and uh, Francesco, thank you so much for letting me participate. Uh, my hat's off to you, Lindsay. Um, you're a great champion and uh, no shame in losing to you. That's for sure.
<laughs> Absolutely. No questions. Both of you guys, uh, it's a shame that only one could be the winner with the gameplay that we saw today. And um, really a pleasure to watch you guys play again. So with that, um, let's just, uh, oops, sorry, hold on. I will, I will make sure that I am actually back on screen here to say our goodbyes on the stream. Just for the record, players, you are not audible anymore, so you can feel free to um, sit, talk amongst yourselves as I outro our broadcast here. Um, but uh, yeah, once again, that was a, a, our Scrabble Community Scrabble Go Community Tournament Finals, our first event of that type in 2021. Um, a pleasure to bring that to you guys. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Seeing Lila Crotty in the chat saying, congrats, players. Great commentary, Will. Thank you so much. That's a, prou a proud mom for sure. Um, and, uh, yeah, thanks once again to our players and organizers as well. You heard Colin mention uh, Glenn and Francesco behind the scenes, making sure everything runs smoothly and organizing the event. Um, so with that, um, just want to say a final thank you from me. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all of your good comments in the chat. And we will look forward to bringing you guys more events of this type sometime soon. So all right, everybody. Uh, have a great rest of your day. And don't forget to keep playing uh, Scrabble Go and look out for the next tournament that uh, comes across your feed. Definitely follow uh, Scrabble Go social media on Facebook and you will uh, be notified of events like this. If you're saying, how can I get in the mix? How can I make the finals? Um, stay tuned for more announcements when events like this come down the pike. So, all right, everybody. Thanks so much and catch you guys later.